So Faraday's experiment for studying the electric flux density field has the following setup. There is a sphere of radius A units, which is marked in orange. And there are two hemispherical cups, which are shown in yellow color and pink color. The space between the outer sphere and the inner sphere is filled with dielectric material or insulating material. So when the outer hemispherical cups are assembled, they form a uh, sphere, an outer sphere, and the radius of outer sphere is called B units. Let's look at the steps of Faraday's experiment. With the entire equipment dismantled, the inner sphere was given a known positive charge, plus Q, as shown here. And the hemispheres were then clamped together around the charged sphere with about 2 centimeters of dielectric material between them. The outer sphere was discharged by connecting it momentarily to the ground. The outer space was separately separated carefully using tools made of insulating material in order not to disturb the induced charge on it. And the negative charge induced on each hemisphere was measured carefully. So if you look at the schematic, the inner sphere of radius R, R equal to A units, and the outer hemispherical cups have uh, radius B units. The inner sphere is given a charge of plus Q. So Faraday found that the total charge on the outer sphere was equal in magnitude to the original charge placed on the inner sphere, but opposite in sign. So the inner sphere had a charge of plus Q, and the outer hemispherical cups got a charge of plus a minus q. The charge, a sign is reversed, but the magnitude being the same. And also the electric flux in the region between the pair of charged concentric spheres is shown here. The direction and magnitude of D are not functions, they do not depend on the dielectric material between the uh, spheres. So Faraday concluded that there was some kind of a displacement occurring from in the inner sphere to the outer sphere which was independent of the medium. So this is insulating or dielectric material which does not conduct the charge. But the outer sphere, outer hemispherical cups are getting a charge. So there's some kind of a displacement happening through the insulating material because they are not conducting but there is still some kind of a displacement because the outer sphere is receiving a charge. And this charge received was independent of the medium and uh, it's, it's called the displacement, displacement flux or electric flux or electric flux density. It's electric flux density because we look at the charge per unit area which got displaced. So the flux density is charge per unit area. So with this idea, if we look at the flux density in the radial direction, it has a value of Q over 4 pi R squared along AR when R equal to A units. It equals Q by 4 pi B squared along AR when R equals B units. At any distance R between A and B, at any distance R between A and B, it has the value Q over 4 pi R squared along AR, radial direction AR. So if we now make the inner sphere small, extremely small, while still having the same charge, it becomes a point, but in spite of that, the D or the displacement field or the electric flux density field at a distance r would still have the same value even when the sphere inner sphere is made a point charge but carrying a charge equal to q so basically it's some somewhat saying that it's independent of the shape even if you had this charge plus q over some point charges over some kind of a charge distribution, it would, it would still continue to hold. The D field would still continue to be this. So the D field is given by Q by 4 pi R squared along AR.